Now, you worked with uh, Tony Abbott when he was health minister, so I can't have you That's on right. the show with, w without asking you uh, about his future. Now, after he was deposed as prime minister, he made the decision to stay in parliament. He claimed there would be no undermining, no leaking or no sniping. A lot of people have said that he's uh, broken that vow, and a lot of people have said that his commentary on uh, the Liberal Party this year has been unhelpful, though I have to say that that he's probably behaved better during the uh, postal survey because I think that gave him, you know, something uh, to, to campaign on, which is what he's good at. Now, there's still yeah. speculation that he could uh, return to the leadership amongst the uh, conservative uh, commentariat. Is that a view that you share? And if he, you know, can't return to leadership, what uh, what does his future hold? Well, I think. Um... Whether he should return to the leadership uh, in terms of his own career is something that, uh, uh, if I were him, I would not be, you know, taking the poison chalice that Malcolm Turnbull is basically going to hand on to whoever succeeds him. Um, effectively, I think what the Liberal Party learned after September 2015 is that uh, these types of leadership changes have major transactional costs, not just internally but externally in terms of of how you're perceived by the voting public. As far as Tony Abbott goes, look, I, I think uh, one of the coalition's best uh, best performers, particularly political and campaign performers, is actually la languishing on the backbench. And it was disappointing uh, that uh, Malcolm Turnbull didn't take the opportunity after the, the 2016 election was finalised to bring him back into the ministry. I think uh, Tony Abbott in Cabinet, uh, with his experience, with his political nous, and the fact, uh, yes, he is the best opposition leader we ever had, uh, which means that he knows how to campaign, he knows how to write, do politics. That's one thing that's been missing from the government, I think, uh, under Malcolm Turnbull, that uh, uh, he could have uh, brought back into the mix. Now, there is a, uh, a reshuffle that's pending. Uh, that's uh, you know, not least to make Peter Dutton this homeland security uh, um, super czar. Um, but other changes I hope will be made and uh, it's still not too late I think to bring Tony Abbott in and then if you talk about uh, um, Tony's um, eruptions from the backbench over the last 12 months or so. The one thing about Tony Abbott in my view is that uh, he actually respects the um, traditions of Parliament and, and Cabinet government and particularly Cabinet solidarity so um, if he were in Cabinet he wouldn't be speaking out, he wouldn't have the freedom to speak that he has as a backbencher and he would consider himself bound by cabinet solidarity here. The one thing about Tony is that he is loyal, he's straight and he's not a leaker. So um, you know, it may well be that the relations between the current prime minister and the former prime minister are not personally not brilliant. Um, but if uh, both of them are prepared to put their differences aside for the benefit of, of the good of the party and for the good of the country, uh, then I think that that show of unity might be a big step forward in uh, keeping the Liberal Party and the coalition as a whole in the political game against Labor. The reason why I mentioned his uh, campaigning during the marriage uh, postal survey, because that is when we saw the, the old Tony Abbott emerge. Now, even though he uh, his side lost the, the, the postal survey, there is still the, the other issue of energy affordability, which does resonate uh, with the electorate. So he, he still does have you know, his, his finger on the, the hot button issue uh, there. Uh, and there's certainly a role for him to, uh, if he was given that opportunity that uh, you, talk, you talk about, uh, for him to uh, make a contribution. But, uh, but it seems to me that the reason Malcolm Turnbull is prepared to keep him on the back bench is because Turnbull, I think, feels dudded himself that he wasn't made treasurer in Abbott's government and so wants to punish Abbott by keeping him on the back bench while he's prime minister. Oh, I disagree with that. I, I think uh, if I was reading anything into it, uh, I, I would think that perhaps the prime minister... Um, uh, knows about former leaders in cabinet uh, from his own behaviour and, and possibly uh, thinks that uh, where I went, Tony could go too. Uh, but as I said, I don't think Tony is that type of operator. I think he is uh, somebody who takes uh, his role as a cabinet minister, or let alone as a prime minister, seriously um, and uh, respects the conventions of uh, cabinet government, especially cabinet solidarity. But uh, so the point I think that you made about his campaigning skills is right. I mean, uh, he can put his finger on 
hot button issues that concern the electorate, not what concerns the, the you know the parliamentary bubble. And, and energy affordability is a good case in point. But he's also good with coming up with simple killer lines that uh, cut through. Whereas um, the prime minister you know, still talks like a barrister sometimes. He argues a brief rather than uh, um, plays plays the politician and. Uh, uh, really, I think where the coalition is at the moment, they need to get their politics right as well as their policy. And uh, and with a little look, it's not too late. Uh, whether the citizenship issue means that more MPs fall by the wayside and it means an election is sooner rather than later, or, or not, um, yeah, you know, I'd like to see Parliament run to its full term. If it does, I still think there's a reasonable chance that the coalition can recover from where they are. But uh, it's going to take a lot of work, and it's going to be putting the A-team on the paddock. And if you want the A-team on the paddock, you have to have Tony Abbott in it. Now, a lot of the media commentary has said, you know, he's being a wrecker, he's uh, trashing the Liberal Party. Do you think that's the media, you know, because they've obviously never liked Tony Abbott, that's uh, a media beat-up? Uh, yes, I think it is. Uh, as you say, the media as a whole has never liked Tony Abbott, particularly never liked his brand of conservatism. Uh, and... Uh, Really, uh, uh, they they are piling it on and have been piling it on for some years. Uh, and and some of that, yeah, you have to say that Tony Abbott himself allowed to happen. I mean, uh, he made mistakes in his prime ministership that uh, I sense some. I do sense that he has realised now were mistakes. And self awareness is the the first big step to rehabilitation and recovery. So. Uh, if he has understood that, I mean, uh, I've you know, been criticism. Of, I know that he has, uh, in terms of the policy manifestos that he's been running through the year, um, that he didn't like uh, his uh, position on Section 18C, for instance, that he didn't follow through when he was prime minister and had the opportunity. If he now realises that he should have, and he could have, and he, and if he is, you know, in a position again, he would, he would then that's actually a positive thing. But uh, um, my sense at the moment is that uh, it would be unlikely he would become Prime Minister again or leader of the Liberal Party, but I think he can become a Cabinet Minister again and be a very effective uh, contributor to the team at a time where the team is uh, a bit lost and divided. Uh, going back to what you said previously about uh, Turnbull, he, he definitely lacks that campaigning uh, skill and really, you know, smashing the the opposition. Like going back to the 2016 election, like I don't, I, I think if you know Tony Abbott was still prime minister, that allowing you know Mediscare to fester, that would have never have happened under uh, Tony Abbott's leadership. And I was surprised right. that the I, I have I have no doubt that's right. And the coalition, they didn't the really problem... hammer uh, Labor on like the issues on the the boats and or, or, and you know they were going to bring back a, a form of carbon tax. They they really let Labor you know off scot free in that regard. Well, they did, uh, and I think that's uh, but it's water under the bridge. Uh, you can't uh, fight the last campaign. You have to look forward to the next one, and you actually have to come up with uh, a policy program that is actually looking forward as well. Um, there's no point in crying over spilt milk, it's done, it's dusted. Um, you know, Malcolm Turnbull as leader paid the price for that in terms of the election result. Um, the thing that the coalition has to do now is survive. Uh, it has to regroup and survive. And uh, it's in the. It's not just in their interest, it's in the interest of all those who know that uh, we need a competent, stable centre-right government to, to lead this country forward. And, uh, but I think opinion polls are making it also very clear that uh, changing prime ministers again, uh, you know, another round of that revolving door is not what voters want either. They want some stability in the terms of the leadership. And frankly, uh, if the Liberal Party has learnt one lesson from 2015 is that uh, the costs of tossing a, a leader after a couple of years are just not worth it. And so you're definitely a um, bit more optimistic than, than than some are at the moment. You do think that there is a, a way out of this current hole the coalition find itself in? There's a glimmer. There's a glimmer. I mean, if, if uh, basically uh, the English cricket team can bowl Australia out for 130-odd uh, when it all look black, anything can happen. Uh, you know, it's, but they, they need to get themselves back in the game like the English team did in the Test match in Adelaide. Uh, if they can do that, 
by showing a bit of discipline, having a bit of a political nous and uh, having a bit of policy purpose, they've got a shot. But uh, it's going to be difficult. There's no question that they are definitely behind the eight ball. But if I can put it this way, 53-47, two party preferred in the polls looks bad. But 52-48 and going into an election campaign is winnable. Uh, they have to get themselves in a position where it's 51-49 or 52-48 and they, they can go from there with the good campaign because you might, whatever you say about Malcolm Turnbull and Tony Abbott, I don't think the public is warm to Bill Shorten and Labor and, uh, and with the right campaign, the coalition can actually cut through uh, Labor's populist promises and their, their, their glib rhetoric about, uh, you know, effectively you know, we'll throw billions at every problem that uh, we can find uh, to kiss it kiss it better for you. Um, they can do that, but uh, they really need to unite themselves first, and that's what's missing at the moment. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.